Thank you for bearing with us, ladies and gentlemen, bung eye and all. Welcome to the garage. Welcome to the Court of Public Opinion. I'm Jeremy Cordeaux. Peter Clayton is behind the camera. Now, we're going to record three episodes today. We don't normally do that because we like to try and keep everything current. Uh, but Pete is going in to have some tests, heart tests. Well, I had those a few months ago. Pete, it'll be all right. Well... Yes, I believe so. But we are behaving like a couple of old crocs, aren't we? Well, yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look, it'll be all right. But I might keep the glasses, which are much kinder to my eye, not both of them, you understand, just one of them, uh, than trying to not do that. So if you wouldn't mind, again, I'm not, it's not affectation, it's just precautionary. You know, I had... Uh, uh, cataracts when I was, oh, I don't know, I must have been about 50. And uh, I think it was, and I'm glad I got rid of them. I really am. Uh, this is just a minor hiccup. So uh, the fact is I used to drive, still do, open topped sports cars. And I didn't really wear sunglasses, which the doctors tell me is not a good thing. You should do that. If you're out in the sun, wear sunglasses. So I had my uh, eye problem a lot earlier than most people would. But be that as it may, Frank sent me this, which is a bit distressing. I mentioned the um, uh, South Australian, the Adelaide Christmas pageant to you the last time we were talking yesterday. And Frank says... The pageant used to mean the start of Christmas. Now it means the start of security officers in every store that I have been into today. Now that's sad. That's sad. It shouldn't be about... Christmas shouldn't be about security. <laughs> Pardon me. It, it's probably worse in Sydney and Melbourne. Adelaide is a, a much more gentle village, as we were saying the other day. Melbourne Cup Day! Ladies and gentlemen, Archer won the Melbourne Cup. The prize was £20,000. Um, we'll get to that later. But anyway, if you're having a flutter, I hope it's going to be a, a, a successful one. Good luck. A Reserve Bank board meeting today to decide, or probably more correctly, not decide, but announce their decision on interest rates, which is sort of, uh, I won't say it's line ball. I mean, there's more people in favour of the fact that they'll probably hike one more 0.25, quarter of an interest rate quarter of a percentage rate um, but still in all honesty in my living memory interest rates with anything with a four in front of it is not bad apologies to Facebook they uh, didn't censor the exploding electric car <laughs> Pete and I expected that they would they gave you a very stern warning you're going to see something disturbing well we were all able to get it in its glory. And uh, Pete, the fly's back. Yes. <laughs> it's got to be a different one. Uh, I don't know that it's a different one. It's just one. There it is, right there on my hand. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. You're a friendly fellow. I know you're a friendly fellow, but this is ridiculous. Don't be a nuisance. Go and bother somebody else. What about this? Thank you, George. Speaking of electric cars, an invoice for a replacement battery for an electric car, not top of the range kind of thing, but it was a, a, a lower priced Chevrolet, uh, just under US $30,000, which would be around the $60,000 mark in Australian dollars. This is after 70,000 miles in a popular model compact Chevrolet in the United States of America. Thank you for that. Thank you for sending it to me. 
Um, there's a lot of stuff out there about electric cars. There really is. Investigate. Research. Do your homework. And speaking of cars, a shocking accident, a tragedy in Melbourne. People gathered at a cafe enjoying themselves in all innocence, having a good time. Then out of the blue, without warning, lives change forever. An SUV mounts the pavement and smashes into the lives of these poor people, six people dead, many injured. It could have been, well, they've ruled out alcohol. I, they're probably doing other tests, I don't know, but was it a medical event? God knows. But it goes to show, in a fraction of a second, lives can change. Just like that. So what we must do, I think, really, is just to hang on to every precious moment of life and freedom and independence that we possibly can. I mean, living can be dangerous. It clearly is. Uh, did you see any of the pictures out of uh, China? I'm thinking Shanghai in particular. Uh, this is where Anthony Albanese flew in. Um, the thing that struck me, but was not mentioned by the ABC or anyone in the ABC covering the arrival of the Prime Minister or his entourage, it was the fog, the pea super, the pollution. And do you know that in China, it's not unusual to be able to talk to people who have never in their whole lives ever seen a blue sky. But, mind you, not one word about pollution. Not one mention of climate change. Not one mention of it, that is China, being the big polluter? No one stood up there on, on, on the ABC camera and said, you must close your factories! Which is, of course, exactly what they're saying to us. We are the tiniest polluter. They are the biggest polluter. Go figure. Global warming. Pollution. Yet, Prime Minister, you would bankrupt your own country over just 1% of global emissions. Really. And you've gone there, understandably, with a grab bag of things you want to discuss, but not that. <laughs> no. Oh, boy. Listening to Jim Chalmers uh, on the weekend, he said... Uh, too much infrastructure under construction in Australia. Mm. We will be announcing our strategy. Billions of dollars of infrastructure is highly inflationary, but always trotted out at the time of an election. Reneged upon, probably, shortly afterwards. But there you go. I can't count the number of elections which have heralded a super high-speed rail line to somewhere. <laughs> anyway, it's another story. Catherine King. Catherine King. Hmm. The name may ring a bell. The Minister for Infrastructure will be in charge of deciding what gets scrapped. What projects get scrapped. Now, here's a woman who knows something about inflation. And scrapping those projects is about inflation. Okay? I don't know about uh, infrastructure, but you, you remember that she is the minister who stopped the Qatar Airlines from bringing more and cheaper flights into Australia, which, of course, would have helped 
fight inflation. But she wouldn't have a bar of it. Hmm? And wouldn't explain what her motive was or what her directions were or where they came from. Strange. Yet, if you look her up, and you can, I did, look her up, you will see that Catherine King, her only experience is that she was a social worker for a children's home in Ballarat. Believe it or not, that was from 1988 to 1992, I think. <laughs> and she, with no experience, she will be deciding what of the very important promised infrastructure goes ahead in this country and what doesn't. Oh yes, uh, and of course she decided uh, that we would not get cheaper air travel in Australia. <laughs> God help us. I mean, if it, if it, if it was a, one of those slapstick British comedies, it couldn't be, it couldn't be sillier. Yes Minister or Yes Prime Minister or something like that, anyway. Anyway, we'll keep on talking about it because, ladies and gentlemen, nobody else does. Latest poll results show that the Labour government has lost ground since the referendum. I'm not surprised at that. They're down five points and the Libs are up five points. I might have thought more. But anyway, uh, we'll see. I, I, I don't think Albo's got any real interest in anything past the next election because he's not going to get re-elected. He's going to be looking for a nice job on the world stage, as they all do. You remember Gareth Gareth Evans, who was so much a, a, a supporter of, um, now what was his name? The head of the um, United Nations. I can't remember his name. Boutros, Boutros Ghali. Or Boutros, Boutros Ghali, good for you. That's it. Mm. <laughs> I mean, if you had a kid and you called him Boutros, why would you call him Boutros? And why would you call it Taurus? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think Gareth Gareth was a great supporter of Boutros Boutros. <laughs> anyway, be that as it may. <laughs> uh, dear. Uh, one more. Over $100 million was spent on the preparation of that Kimba low-level nuclear waste repository or depository. Plenty of discussion and inquiry. Thumbs up, deal done, all settled. Then the local Aboriginals independently decided, above everyone else, no, no. I have to assume that the Aboriginals had ample opportunity to express their opinion. Anyway, an exhaustive analysis, inquiry and hearing and one hundred million dollars. Now, for nothing. Where is the outrage? Where is the media? Of course, this woke government said okay to the aboriginals i don't even know if they were elders i've got no idea whether they were credible i've got no idea about anything they just said no so we said okay back to square one i don't believe it is possible to work with these people and could i suggest maybe we restrict those particular aboriginal people from any nuclear medical treatment because that is the waste that we're talking about currently stored in 
lift wells and stairwells and basements in North Terrace here in the city of Adelaide. <laughs> now, we must thank God that the yes vote did not get up because we would be risking this sort of thing happening every day up and down the country with every decision that had to be made. And I don't think we could survive that kind of rubbish. Anyway, I'll try and squint through my good eye and have a look at some of the birthdays. If you don't mind, happy birthday. If you're having a birthday, wedding anniversary. As I said, the Melbourne Cup was run for the first time. It was Archer who won. 1862, November 7, obviously. National Day for the Soviet, or oh, one time Soviet Union. Meet the Press started on NBC TV in America, longest running prime time network television show. Started in 1947, but started out in 1945 on NBC Radio. You see, I still think you could run a show in Australia. You learn a lot from the past, you know. God, that program had legs. You could, you, could, you could restart Meet the Press. Because you know what? I'd love to run that show. Because I would love to meet the press. And find out if they have any chutzpah. I don't hear any. Where am I? Heinrich Himmler was born in Munich, Nazi leader. He died in uh, 1945, born 1900. First regular and truly Australian Cine Sound newsreel premiered 1931. I used to love, my grandmother used to take Christopher and me into the newsreel. We used to love sitting there. I don't know why, we were only babies. But I remember it clearly. Oh, we would have been three or four. It was beside the State Theatre in Market Street. The newsreels ran beside usually a big cinema. Of course, they died with television. Uh, the Governor-General Viscount de Lisle, VC, presented the Gold Cup to Mr and Mrs Cohen of Sydney, owners of Lord Fury, winner of the Melbourne Cup, written by Ray Selkrig. The prize money was $20,000. 1961 was the year. Um, Australian Prime Minister Sir William McMahon and his wife Sonia arrived in London, where the Daily Mail reported that the prettiest legs in politics had arrived. Yes, 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 I totally agree with that. Uh, she was so, she was something, Sonia McMahon. 1971. Oh, Steve McQueen died in Juarez, Mexico. I spoke to him, must have been shortly before he died, 1980, it was the year. Um, he went to Mexico, he told me, because somebody there told him that they could cure his uh, bowel cancer. And he, oh God, gee. I suppose you hang on to any hope. Don't you? But somebody told him that if they gave him, what was it, coffee enemas, uh, he could beat this thing. Well, it didn't sadly work for Steve McQueen. Um, jib, 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 jib. Um, Billy Graham was born in North Carolina. Son of a dairy farmer, 1918 was the year, went on to be the Great Crusader. Dame Joan Sutherland was born in 1926. Frank Sinatra got married to the love of his life, Ava Gardner, in 1951. Um, Jean Shrimpton was born. She was the one who showed Denise. And of course the Melbourne Cup, you remember? Oh God, it stirred up such a thing. All she did was to wear a miniskirt. Anyway, she was born 1942. Uh, My Three Sons premiered on Australian television in 63. 
And Lee Gordon was found dead in the Princess Lodge Motel in Kensington in Sydney, suffered a coronary occlusion. Lee Gordon, he was one of the great promoters of uh, show business in uh, Australia. I mean, he was a great friend of, uh, I knew him, he was a great friend of Johnny O'Keefe and a great supporter of local talent. Lee Gordon had his own record label too. Anyway, thank you very much for being with us. Hope you won the Melbourne Cup. Um, I hope the Reserve Bank Board came up with a finding that is to your liking, but what are the chances? Anyway, uh, we're recording that before either of those are known to any of us. We'll be back tomorrow. I'm Jeremy Cordo. Peter Clayton and I will be here. Believe in yourself and thank you for viewing the Court of Public Opinion.